Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you on organizing some of my fabric and also how I organize my quilt tops that I found everywhere. And someone made a comment for me to try these suckers out. So that's what this video is going to be about, and I'll see you in the... and checking these out. All right, bye. Okay, somebody on YouTube told me to buy these. These are comic book boards for my fabric. I think I paid, I don't know, not that much on Amazon. I'll post a link on my information bar thing. Let's see if these work instead of my favorite of these. <laughs> They're free. Um, yeah, this is my favorite. I'll link the video somewhere up there. But someone told me to try these because they said if there's humidity, um, this can stain your fabric. So I, I don't know. We'll see. I haven't had a problem with that. Uh, six and three fourths by ten and a half. They're pretty big. The neat thing about it, it comes with a hundred, so it comes with a lot of them. And it's pretty thick paper. Here's my fabric I need to work on. Fold it in half and start rolling. It's a little flimsy, but hey, you know, what do I expect? It's okay. It's a little flimsy to me. I don't know if you, I guess, but that's all right. So I wrapped all of these. The only thing is, is this stuff is real flexible. Like it's not that stiff. Like this one, I used, you know, a cardboard, like a cardboard, and there's this kind of stiffness to it. And this, I used this with the weight of the fabric it flexes a lot which i guess is okay but well the good thing is like all of these are exactly the same cut like this one's different so yeah in this video i share with you that i am going to go ahead and use these boards to go ahead and wrap my quilt tops that i have worked on that I have not completed. So this is also going to be a show and tell portion of a video. A lot of quilts that I've done when I first started quilting. Also, uh, there was a lot of quilts that I did when I was going to college. Now in the process of doing these quilts, I also did quilts for an elderly community and also did quilts for my church. So I do a lot of quilts for everyone else and just didn't get mine done. So this is a show and tell on my quilts. All right, I hope you like this portion of the video. All right, see you in a show and tell. Someone on my live feed said that if you um, look at unfinished quilt tops, that maybe you'll be more likely to get them done. So what I'm gonna do is, I have this quilt top that I want a long arm quilt, and I'm going to, what I did with the fabric, I'm gonna try to do the same thing with this quilt top and kind of fold it to where just like that fold it in half and then I folded it by three just like this so that I'm going to put them on a shelf so that they're visible so that I can see them and maybe if I see the quilt tops that I need to get done and then this way they're not they're not just folded in a bin and just kind of have it like that okay so these are a couple quilts a client did for me we traded work I did some long arming for her and she did some piecing for me I just love the yellow and blue I honestly have the material for the border. I just need to put it together. But, you know, if you don't see it, you don't think you have to do it. Now, this I did on a live feed, and I showed you guys the black and white paisley quilt. Um, I went ahead, and I'm doing this because of that quilt. You guys told me to do it. It's really old. <laughs> it's an old quilt, uh, quilt top that I haven't done. Yeah, I lost that one a couple times. Now, this quilt top... I found the pattern on a magazine and I thought it was beautiful. Now this is where my piecing was not that good and I lost a lot of my points. Now we've seen this quilt top a couple times. This is repeating across.
quilt top. I did this several years ago for my husband. He really didn't like it because it was too light, he said. And this is Quarter House Steps. I did a tutorial on this quilt top. And it has panels of superheroes. And it's more for a kid. I just like superhero kind of comic strips um, panels a lot. Now this one is a quilt that I did at the church and these are little baby quilts that either I can make them bigger or smaller. The baseball is a cross that I just need to put borders on and the quilt will be ready to do. I mean, I don't have a lot of work to put on these quilts. It just, I don't know. This I did a tutorial on and I will post links on the quilt tops that I did tutorials. This is a beautiful quilt top. I love the design of it. It has one of that weird ruler to um, get the weird awkward shapes. I'll put a link on that one. And this is the leftover fabric from that quilt top of pieces that you're not going to use. So I decided as I was building the other one that I was building this little one with the scrap material. And what I decided is to put the quilt blocks with this quilt top so when I was ready to work on it, I already had the quilt blocks with it and I didn't lose the quilt blocks. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, my life. So yeah, I decided to go ahead and wrap the quilt blocks with the quilt top. Now I've done a tutorial on this big giant um, star with these beautiful blocks. I have a whole bunch of these blocks put together. I just need to, you know pull it out and put it together and it's ready to go. <laughs> um, I literally have nine of those blocks done to go around the center of this star. Now on this one, I went ahead and wrapped all the material. For some reason, my camera would not focus, but I also went and I found all these half square triangles that were in uh, a mess. Yeah. What I do is I just kind of put them in a bin and yeah, I just don't judge me. <laughs> That's just what it is. So here I'm straightening everything out. And I also did some flying geese for the border of this quilt that I have planned in my brain. And um, I did do a tutorial on all the blocks, even the flying geese. So I'm going to wrap it all together and even wrap it inside this quilt top to make sure that I have it together. Now I did this quilt for a and University. We were doing a survey and to get people to do a survey, they had the opportunity to win this quilt. I made one for myself. I already finished one of these. Now a and University in San Antonio changed their logo. So after I graduated, I'm like, oh, either I need to do a new one with a different logo or I don't know, quilt this in such a way that it kind of integrates both logos. But this is the old logo a and University used to have. It is all hand applique, except all the embroidery, of course. Now, I found 29 quilts, and I just wanted to show you a variety of some of the quilts that I've done. I may do another show and tell down the line if you guys like this video, but yeah. Um, it was really fun to go through the history of some of my quilts. Okay, so let me share with you what I did with all these quilts. I have um, my organizing shelves that I put under my mantle. I put all my quilts. Here I'm just showing you all 29 of them. I, yeah, that's a lot of quilts I need to work on for, you know, my pass away. <laughs> so my kids aren't selling them at a flea market. Oh. So here I'm just showing you how I package some of them, like this quilt, I have a whole bunch of blocks there with the ruler, and yeah, I need to be piecing those together. I've done a lot of work, I recognize, and I just kind of have to add a little bit. On some of them, I need to piece more blocks. On some of them, I just need to add borders. On some of them, I just need to get the back fabric ready and put them on the long arm. It's not anything complicated. I just... I guess I just need the time to do them. What I like about this too is here on these two yellow quilts, I pieced all the border, but I lost the border. When I pieced it, I put it in a bin and then I put fabric on the bin and then I couldn't find the border. So I decided to go ahead and wrap 
this big giant roll of borders that I pieced together so I can put it on these beautiful yellow blocks, you know, and sorry, yellow quilts. And it's just, you know, a reminder that I really need to get to, to working, to doing, to finishing my UFOs. All right, so in closing, do you really need to buy these? As a matter of fact, to be honest, I kind of like the stiffness the stiffness of these boards it's also free but I do like the fact that when you use these that all your fabric is kind of the same size if you know having everything exactly the size of this board with all your fabric it's great I got I think you get a hundred pieces of board um, for each um, purchase of these I purchased two. I don't think they were that expensive. The one thing I didn't like about them is when the fabric was on it, it bowed a lot. It was very flimsy. Now, you could double up on the boards to stiffen it like you stiffen it on a cardboard. Like you can see, this cardboard is not even flimsy in comparison to how flimsy this is. But if having the acid-free certification is what matters to you, and if you're in a high humid area, um, maybe these will work for you. But I believe that, I don't know, if, if moisture is a problem, that this can stain your fabric, I would think that this would also be a factor, but I don't know. But for me, like, I bought these, so I'm gonna use them, but do love my my free cardboard <laughs> free cardboard I don't know I have boxes everywhere this is a great way to recycle them so I'm just sharing with you but these are great I have nothing to say but I like these better okay I really do hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one